My first day as a high school math teacher here in the US was a day I'll never forget. Armed with six weeks of training and a little prior teaching experience at an all-girls prep school in rural England, I believed I was ready, ready to change the world, ready to inspire the students, ready to take these kids on a journey through math they would remember for the rest of their lives. And then I stood in front of my first class, <laughs> trying to deliver a lecture about solving linear equations, and all I could see were puzzled and distant looks on the faces of 42 students. And as the day wore on, reality set in. The first problem was the way that I approached the English language. The kids thought I sounded kind of cool, but many of the words and phrases I used were so quintessentially British, it left them feeling confused. The second issue was that the entire class was repeating Algebra 1 for the third time. The kid... <laughs> it wasn't that funny when I was standing there, trust me. <laughs> the kids had switched off to math long before I'd even got there. And then, and this really was not funny, half of the students got stuck multiplying 17 times 9 in a high school Algebra 1 class. And this is a routine third grade math problem. And I knew the magnitude of the challenge I was facing was huge in both algebra and geometry classes. What, what was I doing wrong? In my geometry class, I was teaching the way I'd been taught. I'd draw a triangular prism on the board, plug in some numbers, do an exercise on the board, and ask the kids to complete the questions in the book. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, it wasn't working. In fact, I was telling the kids everything, and yet they were learning practically nothing. And then one evening, I was at the supermarket, and I'm standing in line, staring at the candy in the checkout line, and suddenly it hit me. And I realized there was something I could use to completely change the way I taught math, and something that I knew every kid in my class would relate to. Chocolate. So I grabbed a dozen different bars and decided to use them in a new type of math lesson, one that challenged the students not to memorize formulas, but challenged them to think about something they could see, touch, feel, and even taste. The lesson became a single question. Why make a chocolate bar in the shape of a triangular prism? At first, the kids were totally confused. What do you mean, why? Because it looks cute. They weren't used to being asked to think, especially not in math, but I wanted them to struggle. I wanted them to figure it out for themselves. And eventually, working together, they did. By investigating the geometry of chocolate, my students learned that with this simple shape, the manufacturer saves money, needing the smallest amount of chocolate to fill the largest looking chocolate bar. Woo. <laughs> yeah. Now my kids realized they were paying more, but getting less. And that got their attention. <laughs> and the best bit? I hadn't told them how to find the answer. I hadn't even told them how to figure this out. They figured it out for themselves. And my students learned, or were beginning to learn, an even bigger lesson. Math is more than numbers. In fact, it's economics, it's design. Math is a language we use to describe this incredible world around us. So, I threw out all my textbooks, and I redesigned every single math class using intriguing puzzles and everyday hands-on math problems. And guess what? Test scores went up. In fact, 85% of my students passed classes that they'd previously failed. And the best bit, they, 
they found that love for math, that thing I'd been searching for, that passion, that fever for math that I'd wanted for them from the very beginning. I loved teaching in the classroom, but I wanted to reach more kids. This was working. I wanted to reach more of the students and help them. So I took a position as a math expert with the Los Angeles School District, training teachers, thousands of teachers, to do what I had done in the classroom. And the effort was huge, but the impact on kids felt small. Teachers struggled to change, struggled to let go of the way that they'd always done things, and I knew there had to be a better way for me to reach more kids, and I knew it would involve technology. The trouble is, even today's technology is used to replicate the same dry teaching methods we've been using for a hundred years, and it shows. It really shows. If we're really going to teach kids to speak math, they need active learning experiences where they're guided, but guided to figure it out for themselves. I knew what I wanted the technology to do. I just didn't quite know how to do it. I was stuck. I was frustrated. And then one day, about three years ago, on a routine visit to an elementary school in South Central Los Angeles, I walked into a computer lab, and my learning is happening radar went off. Looking around the room, I saw kids fixated on their screens, playing a game, solving problems, and as you can see, having fun. So. I looked more closely at this game they were playing, and gradually it dawned on me what these kids were doing. They were thinking several steps ahead and figuring out a sequence of rotations to get this little penguin across the screen from the left to the right. And this was first grade. These seven-year-olds were doing multi-step problem solving in their heads. And the best bit, the software never told them how to do it. They tried out their own ideas, and they got to see whether it was right or wrong. And then they had to figure it out for themselves. Who made this game? I was hooked. This is what I needed. So I did the only thing I could possibly do. I handed in my notice, researched the company, guessed the CTO's email address, and begged <laughs> this little nonprofit neuroscience company to hire me to build visual math games starring a penguin <laughs> named Gigi. Seriously, Gigi. And now, I am the director of content creation, building visual math games starring aliens who shoot holes in bridges that need to be filled with fractional blocks, petals that need to be scooped up in different sized bunches to teach kids about place value, and balloons that are arranged in a parabola that need to be burst with a rocket with special controls, and of course, Gigi, this little penguin that kids love to help across the screen. And it's working. In fact, these games and puzzles are transforming math success for half a million students. Today, right now, half a million students. Thank you. In some of the toughest school districts throughout the country. And as we expand, as we build this from kindergarten through calculus, we can level the playing field. We can give all kids the chance to compete in this global economy, because think about it. Everything around us, this theater we're sitting in, our mobile devices, even the streaming video of today's event, all are built using science, technology, engineering, and math. And the kids who can speak that language are going to define the 21st century. Now, as a high school teacher, the geometry of chocolate helped me redefine the relevance of mathematics for 42 kids in one class in Los Angeles. And now this little penguin is redefining math for a generation of students. And my wish, my wish is that one day all children will get the chance to experience the beauty 
of mathematics, maybe in something as small and simple and as wondrous as a little piece of chocolate.